Hi, I'm Professor Barry McDonald from the Pepperdine University School of Law, and welcome to this course. Uh, just a little background on me. I originally hail uh, from the Midwest. Uh, I did most of my schooling in the Chicago area. I graduated college with a business degree, became a CPA, and worked for the accounting firm of Arthur Anderson, where I dealt with a number of business transactions and contracts. Uh, and then I went to law school, and uh, after graduating from law school, I clerked for uh, uh, different federal judges, including on the United States Supreme Court, and then decided to practice, uh, and I practiced in Washington, D.C. Uh, for approximately 10 years. I started out doing uh, business litigation involving, con including contract matters. Uh, I also then moved to sort of contract transactional or business transactional work where I advise companies uh, with respect to their uh, business transactions, including uh, negotiating and drafting uh, different types of contracts like uh, intellectual property licenses or joint venture agreements. Uh, and then finally, I moved into private industry as general counsel for different technology companies. And certainly part of my responsibilities that were there were overseeing uh, companies' contractual matters. So I've done a lot uh, with contracts, so I understand contracts uh, both in theory and in their practical application. Uh, I've been teaching at uh, Pepperdine University since the fall of 2000. I've taught contracts uh, on and off since that time, as well as courses in constitutional law and intellectual property law. Uh, as for this course specifically, I've designed it in the way I generally design it uh, for my law students because I think it makes the best sense, although at a, a higher level, a uh, more general level for non-lawyers. But the basic uh, uh, structure is the same, and I like to refer to it as uh, the life cycle of a contract uh, that I take students through. So obviously the first stage is the negotiation and formation of a contract. So we talk about the principles that govern contract formation. And then we turn to uh, you know, the bargaining process and uh, what problems might have, there might have been in the bargaining process that might give a party a defense to the enforcement of a contract. And then I turn to the terms of the bargain and how we, one resolves disputes over what those terms are. And then once we've decided what the terms of the bargain are, then I talk about how courts still might have uh, issues enforcing those terms uh, if they uh, prove to be unfair uh, to one of the parties or unfair to the public in terms of uh, being detrimental to public policy. And then once we get through the contract terms and, and we're fine with the contract terms, uh, then we get to issues of contract performance. Uh, there we talk about how parties uh, might use legal devices to order uh, the, the, well, I should say to order the timing of their performance, if that might be important to them as it might be to certain parties. And then we talk about, well, what if a, a party fails to perform or render their contract performances uh, when they're due? Uh, if there are any possible defenses to contract non-performance. Uh, and if there aren't any possible defenses to contract non-performance, then we're generally talking about a breach of contract and what remedies might be available to the non-breaching party uh, because of that breach. So uh, we start with contract formation, uh, go through sort of uh, the terms of the contract, then turn to contract performance, and then turn to remedies for any uh, breaches or non-performance of the contract, all through the life cycle of a contract. Uh, and so hopefully by you know, the time that we're done, you'll, you'll have a good understanding of the issues that arise during a life cycle of a contract. Now what does a student need to do to be successful in this course? Well, contract principles can be 
uh, complicated. They can be difficult to understand. I have done my best to uh, keep the uh, concepts at a level that are appropriate for this course. But still, uh, students need to take it seriously. Uh, they need to do their assigned readings, uh, to view the associated lectures and, and take a, a good attempt at doing the problems associated with those lectures. And then hopefully by then to develop a list of questions that you will bring into our live sessions uh, so that we can go through sort of the key aspects of the weekly assignments uh, and answer any questions uh, uh, that you had as you, as you performed your assignments. And hopefully if you do all that, uh, you'll get a very good understanding of sort of the basic principles of contract law that will help you both in life with your personal contract transactions as well as in your jobs with uh, business transactions. Uh, you'll be able to think about uh, contract issues before they arise. Uh, if you're negotiating a contract, hopefully you'll be able to think about things you might want to put in a contract to avoid the dis disputes down the road. Uh, and uh, also, uh, once a contract is being performed, uh, hopefully this course will give you an idea of potential pitfalls in contract performance and what to do to avoid them. But overall, uh, hopefully you will have gained a uh, solid understanding of what it takes uh, to both form and uh, perform contracts both in your personal life and your professional life. With that said, uh, I look forward to uh, your taking this course and uh, uh, I hope that uh, it, it, you succeed and, and all the goals that I've just outlined uh, that you accomplished.